Consider the following 2007 IMO problem number 5 and here is a view of this number theory problem. Uh, we are given a divisibility condition and we would like to show that uh, these two A and B are actually equal if this divisibility condition holds. Let's start with the divisibility condition and let's just apply standard algebra and uh, modular arithmetic techniques to uh, simplify it to something uh, more useful because in its current form it's not as as useful so what i will do is uh, this would imply that for a b if i multiply this by b square for a b minus one would still divide this expression obviously let's multiply out this square we would get 16 a to the four minus eight a square plus one um and then this would further imply, so we still have 4ab minus 1, um, so divides, uh, we would get, uh, well, 16, um, I'll, I'll just write it like this actually, a square b square times a square minus um, 8a square b square, but I, what I will do is instead I will write it as um, 4 actually, um, yes, 4ab uh, square no that won't work uh, I think I need to um, I think I will need to write it as um, let's keep the 4ab okay I won't be able to do the square so I'll just multiply it by 2ab so that would give us 8a square b square that's fine plus b square now why did we do all this uh, one more um, let's go one more step um, uh, okay, so let, that's actually at this point that might be the right moment to turn into modular arithmetic. Um, so obviously, uh, so we have this expression 16a square b square, which is just 4ab squared. Let's write that down 4ab squared, and then we still have the a squared minus, well, we have 4ab uh, times 2ab plus b squared and now this is uh, the our expression is supposed to divide it perfectly right so this is congruent to zero in mod um, 4ab minus 1 but guess what 4ab in mod 4ab minus 1 is just one more than this so that's just one right so that would imply one square times a square which is just a square this one is also one congruent to one so therefore we have minus 2ab and then we have b squared lastly that's congruent to zero in the same mode modulo uh, 4 uh, a b minus 1 and lastly this gives us a square uh, i mean a minus b squared a minus b squared is congruent to zero uh, the same modulo modulo 4 a b minus 1 and if you will we can put it back into the language of divisibility so we that means 4 a b minus 1 divides a minus b square or if you will we can rewrite this as uh, a minus b squared uh, yes uh, divided by 4 a b minus 1 is an integer and you can actually even name that integer if you want to um but then um yeah so that that's pretty good so now uh, the part uh, where um, we want to show that um, a is equal to b uh, let's assume to the contrary that a is not equal to b and without loss of generality let a be the greater one um, and indeed well at least there's one such solution where a is uh, greater than b and in fact um, uh, let's do the following um, so so um, let uh, to be more specific let a1 b1 uh, be such a solution uh, a1 b1 the pair a1 b1 solves this well when i say this i mean this for for an integer for any integer solves this uh, where okay so where okay so this is important a1 is strictly greater than b1 and they are both positive we can say that without loss of generality and and this is the important um uh, uh, assumption uh, where a1 plus b1 is minimal okay so this is a standard technique 
um, we, we will create this infinite descent here or if you will we'll use v eta jumping in a few minutes noticing that this is a quadratic um, and then finding a contradictory statement to this but I want to make sure everyone is clear on that uh, now let's let's replace this thing so uh, if a1 b1 solves it let uh, let's consider this integer k which is equal to a minus b1 squared divided by 4 a b1 minus 1 uh, and let's uh, solve this well obviously one of the solutions huh? um, uh, not huh? uh, uh, one of the solutions one of the solutions to this thing is solutions is uh, well uh, a1 b1 and I, I, I and the k that I want is that one the one where a1 b1 is one of the solutions that's the, the k that I'm interested in all right so or maybe I should have said that way where one of the solutions is a1 b1 okay that's good all right so uh, well does it have any other solutions that's the key <laughs> and that will give us the desired uh, um, contradiction hopefully something contradicting this condition so we just do a cross multiplication and then uh, rearrange the equation hopefully you should get this and please do so make sure you you, you calculate it so 2b1 uh, plus 4b1 k times a uh, plus b1 square plus k um, and that's supposed to be equal to zero uh, so what if you guys seeing it so I, I I'm just writing it as a quadratic in a obviously because I as I said I know that a1 solves this huh? a, a1 is one of the solutions to this thing right uh, for this fixed b1 a1 is one of the solutions where one of the solutions is a1 or let's just write it like this one of the solutions is a1 okay good um, well what can we suggest about this obviously this quadratic has two solutions and I wonder what is the other solution let's say that let a1 be uh, a1 and and a2 be the two solutions to this quadratic solutions uh, and let's let's try to understand what is the second solution here well first of all let's use v eta uh, both for the summation and the product well the the summation will tell you that a1 plus a2 is equal to 2b1 plus 4b1k well obviously here b1 is an integer k is an integer the right hand side is an integer suggesting that uh, but a1 was also an integer so suggest um suggesting that a2 is also an integer that's important and let's have a look at the product again by v eta uh, is equal to b1 square plus k and this would imply a2 is simply equal to b1 square plus k divided by a1 and that's positive that's nice so therefore combining these two we realize that a2 is a positive integer so that's that's important so a2 is not only an integer it's a positive uh, integer uh, but because of the minimality of a1 plus b1 uh, um, that uh, w what it means is that by uh, minimality minimality of uh, a1 plus b1 uh, we know that uh, a2 plus b1 must be l greater than uh, a1 plus b1 right because uh, this equation uh, obviously um, a2 b1 also solves it right so you want to make sure that uh, uh, that it is greater than this expression otherwise we, we get a uh, we violate this minimality and I will show that this will lead to the desired contradiction actually so uh, a2 plus uh, b1 um, or if you will the b1s will cancel obviously from here so a2 is gr um, greater than or equal to actually would be sufficient so because it nowhere it says it's unique right so a2 greater than or equal to a1 all right so uh, let's replace here a2 with um with with what we got here earlier right so this would imply so check this out uh, b1 square plus k divided by a1 uh, is greater than or equal to a1 
I can simply cross multiply knowing that a1 is positive. So we would get b1 squared plus k is greater than or equal to a1 squared. Further, moving the b1 squared. So k is greater than or equal to a1 squared minus b1 square and aha so at this stage we can now rewrite this expression <laughs> into the equation uh, to replace k i should say so therefore uh, so therefore we get a minus b1 uh, square over 4 actually okay so check this out 4ab1 minus 1 uh, which is equal to k this is greater than or equal to a1 square minus b1 square. This is a fixed thing. k is a fixed number. But what? Uh, remember that a1 was one of the solutions to this thing, right? So therefore, rather than writing it in general form, I will really write it as an a1 here. And I'll do the same thing here. a sub 1. Aha. And now this is good because this would further imply if you factorize this a1 minus b1, a1 minus b1 on the left hand side as well, they would cancel. So we would get a1 minus b1 and then we still have 4a1 b1 minus 1 is greater than or equal to a1 plus b1. Aha. And we can further the cross multiplication because the, the denominator is positive as well. a1 b1 being positive. We would get a1 minus b1 greater than or equal to a1 plus b1 uh, 4 times a1 b1 minus 1 now this is greater than 0 obviously two positive integers their sum would have to be uh, greater than uh, strictly greater than their difference knowing that a1 and b1 are strictly positive so we get the desired uh, contradiction so therefore uh, going up uh, we just realize that this assumption is actually wrong. A1 and B1 better be equal to each other. They can't be different than each other. Remember how we started. We started by saying that let's assume to the contrary that uh, the solution to these be not equal to each other and without loss of generality let one of them be greater than the other one and we found a contradiction in the end suggesting that our initial assumption was wrong. A1 better be equal to uh, B1. And uh, and that's nice. Uh, another thing to to, to 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 simply notice is you might say, hey, why didn't we contradict this condition? Maybe it is this condition we need to change. We can't change this condition because uh, a1 and b1 being positive integers, uh, we have to have in the set of positive integers a minimal, right? So you can't have an infinite descent where you have a2 plus b1 is less than a1 plus b1. You can't keep going down forever uh, in an infinite descent. So you can't really, you have to have a minimal thing, right? So this is part of the uh, integers the positive integers so therefore we have really violated this thing so a1 better be equal to b1 or if you will a better be equal to b as a result of this condition and that solves this problem now i want to say make two remarks well the first uh, remark is that uh, the number uh, uh, four here is uh, can be replaced with any number uh, greater than one actually so the the statement still holds so therefore uh, you you might as well so uh, claim the following so uh, let me write it with a different color maybe uh, we might as well have claimed that, or no not claim so this is the statement which is true actually um, so um, uh, alpha times uh, a times b minus one divides uh, f um, well that one is alpha obviously alpha a square minus one square uh, minus one square uh, would have implied that again a is equal to b if uh, alpha is strictly greater than one so that's a first remark which is useful and so there's nothing special about the number four there and a second remark which is useful is the original submission the shortlisted uh, problem uh, was a slightly different one in fact the, the original question was asking for the following uh, for k a positive integer uh, the question was asking to show that 8k n minus 1 uh, divides 4k square minus 1 square implies uh, k is even k even even um, so and uh, for, for which this uh, the, 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 the question, the IMO problem 
has been just a lemma, but apparently the problem committee decided that they just want to pose this one and the other question would have been too hard. So uh, in order to solve this problem, you can just think of the, 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 the IMO problem as a lemma. And in this lemma, you can just replace, now that we have proven this statement, in this statement, if you replace A with K and then uh, B with uh, 2N, uh, that should give you this expression actually <laughs> um, and yeah so and that's it um, uh, and uh, that would again uh, from here you, you would get that uh, a and b better be equal to each other and that would give you the desired expression that k is equal to 2n and boom so i hope you enjoyed it and looking forward to see you guys in our next lecture